Hey, it's Mero. Can we get 500 likes on this video? Oh, we are so back in this back to work thing. Mm. Move traffic. Come on, man. Maybe the afternoon commute will be better. Yeah, we're caught again. This construction has been like ongoing for decades. Maybe not. But uh, again, this is one of the things that got me into metal detecting. So we'll have to pull over and find a park that is if I can move. Yeah, we're, this is gonna take hours. So we're, we're going to a new spot. Well, let's do it. Ah, the sounds of New York. Everybody honking and people blocking the road. Ah! And here's why I'm stuck in the same spot because Nebraska Land Truck! That's not me honking. Everybody else, go, Merrill, go. All right, we got what looks like old dirt. I hope. Let's see what we got. I spy a lot of signals here. Always like to start off with something that's deep because if I get something that's deep, there we go. Now even deeper, something that's deep that is new, you know you're not gonna have too much luck there, at least in that spot. But without digging, I can tell you this is gonna be good. I think it's gonna be good because look at all this mix of uh, vegetation That might do. There we go, 24 up to 28. That's what we're digging. Well, it is a penny, but look, it's that sandy soil that kind of preserves. I see some mix in there too, but this is a 1969 penny. It wasn't down too far, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited by the start. Okay. Look at that. That is a dream signal if I've ever seen one. Five arrows down. Oh, snap. Let's pull this one together. This one is down there. And anything in the 30s. Oh, man. Okay, this is a bummer of a pull, no doubt about it. I do believe, yep, that's the object. But this does not disqualify us from getting something good, I would say. Ooh, it's talking to me. Okay, now we're starting to see. This would be some fill dirt with some old fill put in. Hmm. All right, I'm looking at the arrows, yes. And I'm also listening for the localization of the signal. I'm calling wheat. Super deep. We're about a foot down. Too good to be true. Strong signal, I'd say maybe 13 inches. I don't think this is gonna be a coin, but as you can see, the uh, fill goes down to here, maybe four or five inches. There's a layer below. Very ominous sign. I'm more than a foot down. I don't know if you could see that. I believe that's a can. I'm gonna see if I can get a part just to verify. Oh man, this ground was stirred. Look at this. This is probably a Budweiser can. Definitely aluminum. Oh, well, let's fill this hole. So the options were get back in that traffic or go find another section of the park. When there is dumping of uh, fill on, uh, onto a landscape, you know, onto a park, uh, it really ruins it. It, it really, it, it's contamination. That's what it is. Um, sometimes 
the dirt can be stirred, and I've found better results there. But very often, instead of just cleaning up the uh, many bottle caps or such that have accumulated, or if there's drainage issues, and this was a, a shoreline park, the powers that be just very often decide, oh, let's dump some dirt in there. And what's cheaper than dirt? Garbage. Pretty big place though, so let's, uh, let's move around. This park has history, and I, I checked historic aerials uh, to see the layout of the land in the past. Um, it, it can really get ruined. Places can really get ruined. It's a quarter. Quarter, I think. Nope. Hagen does. We are on the board. Of course it's a mark. <laughs> 1927. There we go. All right, so we're back on the silver. That is coin number 88 for the year and silver piece number 118 all right i'm gonna stick around this area i think we're dealing with mixed soil here but let's look i'm trying to choose quality of signal over depth however that merc was kind of deep i thought for a second it uh we struck again but no this was actually surface i just miscalculated dime all right, here's one I'm interested in. Up to 29, like that, Merc. I wouldn't call that local, but we're still gonna dig. This one is definitely not silver. This one is orange. Dimmy. Same drill. Man, look at this. The vast majority of stuff here is gonna be junk, I'm pretty sure. But you know what? We got one good signal today. Let's do it a little bit longer, then we can move on to another. Actually, no, we can't move on to another park. We're freaking caught in traffic, so let's make the most of it. All right, what's gonna be extra important is the localized sound like that. Oh, the Canadians were here, eh? It is a 1984 Canadian penny. Deep. Nope, it's a quarter. You know, I'm not having fun with this. Let's move on to the park that, I, I know it's gonna take some traffic. Let's move on to the park that, uh, at least I know if I get something deep, it has a chance of uh, silver. You see, there's no, skill to this it's a, it's a crapshoot i i mean the skill i guess is hearing but let's move on oh seriously this guy's telling me to turn around i swear there are like vehicles that are like purposely going slow in front of me today there we go oh my god it's a breakaway it's a break away oh lord okay Back to this again. Yeah, I know complaining is buzzkill, but uh, there, there's some interesting points to this. Why all the traffic, you ask? Well, one, there's construction, that's the obvious. But uh, two, the section of the Bronx that I work in, it has the old street grid. There was a gentleman who's notorious in New York City named Robert Moses, uh, who created the modern street grid, but that was built over an older street grid. And you can tell what section of New York it, that you're in, if you're in an older one or a newer one. Uh, if it's off the grid, that's where the expression comes from. If it's off the grid, it is old New York. I work in off the grid New York. Yeah, so here, here's a quick 
uh, showing of what I mean. You get a place like this right here, all these meeting spots. Could you imagine the congestion? You got one, two, three, four, five. Wait, is that six? One, two, three. Yes, six intersections. And yeah, that's a hot mess in terms of traffic. It was off the grid New York. And then you have the grid over in here. But New York is a mishmash of old New York and new New York because all of these areas, they were separate. You know, it was like separate little towns within the, the town of Westchester. The Bronx used to be called Westchester. And they came up and they were connected by roads. The area in between and the real population boom happened in the 20th century. And it connected all of those older towns. I'm going to link this article from Vassar University, and it's a, it, it's a sociological article, but uh, it's the construction that Robert Moses did in the Bronx really screwed a lot of people. And what was happening was New York was a quickly growing city, and it needed an infrastructure. And that infrastructure, you might have heard this story before with Dead Horse Bay, but it happened all across the city. This infrastructure was created through eminent domain and really displacing people from th their homes. I'm going to read two quick paragraphs. Uh, when Robert Moses decided to build the Cross Bronx Expressway in the late 40s, he was trying to erase and deny the cultural significance and vibrancy of areas such as East Tremont that were to be demolished. The documentary series New York a documentary, documentary Film explores the disconnect between the actuality of Bronx neighborhoods and how Moses presented them. East Tremont, for instance, was a low-income co area but was self-sustaining both culturally and materially. Moses, however, presented the area as if little were going on and that he would have little trouble displacing residents. And second, quite literally, Moses got rid of his critics by displacing more than 1,500 families to build the Seven Mile Expressway. The massive trench created during construction is the result of destruction of Bronx homes, though Moses could have built along another route that would have displaced far fewer residents and cost much less money his massive project was a showing of power in the face of displaced residents. In other words, there were wealthier areas that had more clout. Uh, the ruination of these homes created immense grief to, for displaced residents uh, who could now do nothing to stop Robert Moses. All right, this is the ultimate visual. This is from uh, andyarthur.org. History of the Cross Bronx Expressway, 1952 versus 2017. Very controversial topic. So here is 2017. Here is 1952. The road that you're looking at is right here, this narrow roadway right in here. So it's not like it was a... Uh, area with no population. <laughs> he just bulldozed. He played Sim City. And after arguably bulldozing an inefficient path, he did not have the foresight to see the growth of the city in the future. And it is extremely narrow, and the volume of traffic that runs through the Cross Bronx, the Bruckner, er, huh, yeah. <laughs> All the car... Oh, this is crazy. This is crazy. Beep. Crazy. Listen, I, I do. I love my job. I do. The traffic. Oh my God. This stuff. I'm sorry. I just need to vent. I need to take a video to vent. Especially since I've been working remotely so much. Oh Lord. We are barely crawling. I mean, we're at a red light now. But you see what I have to put up with. Yeah, 20 years of this. 20 years. 
So if any of you were wondering, geez, why does he put out so many videos, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is a good reason why. You know, the job itself is great. Oh, the commute. Oh, but again, that's part of the reason I got into metal detecting. My origins as a metal detectorist was to avoid this. Let's say something constructive and teachable instead of just complaining. Stuff like this, though, it, it prevents certain places from getting metal detected because it blocks the access or it prevents people from wanting to get to a certain spot. So, you know, it, it, and it's happened before. I've run into gold mines because nobody has gone there before or few and I've gotten scores of silver. You know, most of the fill up the box box was because of conditions like this. Help. Oh, they're moving. Go, Merrill, go. All right, the bright side of this madness is uh, the sun is staying out later. So that means I can stay out later. I turn into a pumpkin in the dark. <laughs> 13 to 15, but deep. Should have known better. This is just screaming iron, but... I like it. People ask me why am I so attached to the Equinox? Look at this. You could hear each signal separately. It just makes sense of New York garbage, which is, if you detect New York, you get it. Pretty much everybody who detects in New York now, they have an Equinox. 2120. It's an old Pepsi bottle cap. Lovely. Uh-oh. That could just be a quarter, but let's see. Yep, exactly that. That's a quarter. Another high tone. And look what I had. Look at how I had to find that. You do not swing fast in New York. Iron plus 1980 penny equals skewed signal. We got a coin spell. These two were pressed together. That's not going to be silver. Yeah, it was a zinc penny, a quarter, a dime, and a nickel. And that's all, folks. Deep. Yeah, two of these together. Great. Just tried to pull gold, and I didn't get it. Slightly higher tone. Go, go, go. Always Coca-Cola. Yeah, let's do some uh, real-time detecting. Let's dig it. With a bigger pinpoint, I had a feeling. I'm in the middle of doing research Ooh. about the XP Deus. Hmm. And uh, basically, I found an article, or actually a forum post, saying that the Deus is highly mediocre in bottle cap land. Somebody drank vodka. Vodka. I'm calling something good for this one. Yeah, 
that's not exactly plugging there. Barry's gonna kill me. And I see it, there we go. Hagen dies. Has been unlocked. There we go. On the silver. Yep, I called that one. And I broke this one with my shovel. Great Merrill. All right, number two on the day. There we go. That is number 89 for the year and 119 for pieces of silver. Canslaw. Made some friends here. All right, good signal here. 28, 26, 25, yep, the higher ones could be something good. Oh, we like got a quarter. Quarter? Yep. That looked like a penny for a second. Is in there? Uh, I don't think so, buddy. So, um, well, um, this is me. Yeah, I saw someone with a metal detector. They found an iPod. Hold on. Can you push No, oh yeah, you can push that down. Here, this goes towards your first metal detector. You guys got a quarter each. All right. Oh. They pay for themselves, I'm telling you. So they cost a few hundred dollars, but they, uh, they pay for themselves. Could be. Oh, yeah, there's lots of coins oh, down here. Yeah, everybody wants to get outside. I don't, because it had a sunburn the last time I went outside. Oh, yeah. Outside is great, oh, buddy. This thing is red. But I had a sunburn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was like a few days ago. Wait, you had a picnic. And I went to someone's house. You were there. No, I didn't. No, at that girl's house. At that girl's house. Wow. Make sure you wear sunblock you next time. You know where the dog was? Well, not, not. Nacho? You know the dog, Nacho? Yeah. Yeah, that's, you know what he's doing? Well, I hear something. I hear something. But imagine if someone just, imagine if there was a diamond. Imagine if you find oh, diamond. I have. What, in there? Oh, see this, this is called a pull tab. Uh -huh. When you used to open soda cans, yeah. you used to pull these things off. They don't make them like this anymore. Black. Bottle cap. Do you guys remember my uh, YouTube channel name? We'll Metal Detecting NYC. So this video is coming out tonight. How many subscribers do you have? Like 10,000 or so. What? Yeah. 10,000 subscribers? Yeah, not much. Yeah. I mean, he, he just made a YouTube channel and he got like 20. Go for you, buddy. That's awesome. YouTube is a lot of fun. All right, we have a chance that this is iron. I'm still going to dig it. It repeats. I'll take I'll take history over diamond. Diamond with gold. That's that's the ideal, right? Yeah, old nail. Yeah, we're going to leave that in the ground. I like this signal. Might take that back, that sounds a little big, but let's see. No, this is a really old penny. This is an Indian head penny. How do you enjoy your pancakes? Well, I enjoy mine internationally. Fetch the jet. International House of Pancakes has been unlocked. Bye bye. Have you ever heard of an Indian head penny? Can you see the date on this one? Um, uh, it says 1880, 1895. 1895, that's right, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. We are counting Indian head pennies this year. I was stuck at 13, we are now to 14. And I better get digging if I am planning on getting to a hundred. 
listen very carefully for the iron. Now this is where I want to test the dais, and I think I will. The bottle caps are a no-no, but iron like this is where you really can see some good results from what I've read about the dais. Well, my new friends have uh, left, and I think that uh, they got a good impression of metal detecting, so happy about that. Got a good signal here. Dim dim. Money penny. Seems north of 30. I just got one of my quarters back. Very strange. We have uh, an Indian head and two silvers, but uh, no wheat. Wow. This has a chance of being silver. Jumping around. All the way into the 30s. Nine inches down. Sweet mother of pearl. Right next to it, same thing. Let's move. It's a quarter. Got the other quarter back. Okay, here's a classic silver dime signal. 27, 28, 29. Here is a classic. I've found so many of these. Bah. All right, look at this one. Five arrows down. Grass is long though, let's see. It is a super deep penny from the 60s. Hey man, far out. Could be iron. I hear iron right here, and at the edge, hear that? Interesting. Could go both ways. Let's see. Okay, relic experts, we got something really old here. It seems to have grooves down here on this side. Now, I'm hoping it's more than just the top of an old fence post. But uh, it was, uh, I guess, hammered on this side and originally uh, cylindrical. On to the next. All right, it's about time to drop the mic. All right, another 1964 penny. So I'm gonna look around this area. That's silver era. 27, 28. Yunk. Same signal as the Indian head penny. <laughs> Sink on. Piece of eight. 1979. Ah. Back to bottle capville. All right, I'm calling it. Mm, a little low. All right, I'm taking back the call, but you better believe we're digging this. Well, here is our wheat scent for the day. 39. 28. The grass is really long. Probably a quarter possible piece of silver. I do believe I saw something. Yep, look at that. Look at that. 
right there. Rosie. Sixty one. Yeah, life, you chip away, you pick the moments to do what you got to do, and you be kind to people. And uh, I did my best to do all of those today, and <laughs> we'll probably end up repeating the process tomorrow. Oh, for the love of God! <laughs> Maybe I should go metal detecting again. <laughs> For the sake of traffic, hit that subscribe button, please. All right, let's dump it out. Okay, <laughs> and let's sort it. Well, we got the uh, three silvers, we got the Indian head, we got a wheat scent, got a Canadian coin, and this bunch of clad. It was a good day, except for that darn traffic. Oh yeah, and the junk. Junk is inevitable in New York. Speaking of junk, this is 2021 junk. There, there, I think at the end of the year, I'm, I'm gonna save it and, uh, I, I mean, I, I've thrown out a lot of it too. We got a bucket here that's full of stuff. This is one year, folks. Ah, the concept of the silver lining. We all know it well, but sometimes you need the actual object to remind you of that. And when I saw that last coin that I pulled, it had that silver lining. That's life. And uh, even the stuff that I spent time complaining about in this video, I'm fine. I know I'm fine. Um, you know, got a great family. That's all I can ask for. Uh, the job is great. The commute to the job is not great. Um, but you know what? That got me to metal detecting. And, uh, you know, perhaps everything happens for a reason. Thanks for watching, folks.